No Guts, No Galaxy is recorded in front of a live studio audience. This is an adult podcast containing adult language. Consider yourself warned. Live from the outreach studios around the world, this is a No Guts, No Galaxy podcast. And now, your host, Phil, a.k.a. Sean Lang. Welcome to the No Guts, No Galaxy podcast number 78. My name is Phil, and I'm your host. It is June 19th, 2013, and my shout-out, it's going to go to my old mech buddy, Chuck Bias. Congrats on the wedding, bro, and, uh, you know, I'm happy for you, and have fun uh, with that celebration and you guys going on your honeymoon. So we'll see you when you get back get you back into some mech war online action. Darren, who do you have? Hey, this is Darren, a.k.a. Bombadil, and my shout-out today goes to UC Display and Apricots from the Free to Game podcast. If you haven't checked it out yet, please do. Free to Game, that's the letters T-O, not the number two, dot com. And Brandon, who do you have? Hello, this is Brandon, also known as Patrick Pell, and tonight my shout-outs are going to Mech Specs, MWOG, Aces, because they're always recruiting. You whore. And of course, to all of our... All of our live studio audience out there, thank you for showing up and taking the time out of your day or night or wherever you are in the world. And to all of our new listeners, whether you're tuning in for the first time or this is like your, I don't know, 78th podcast and so you're still following us. I'd, yeah, that's crazy. 78 podcast. And then on top of that, all the mixed up beer. Oh, sheesh. It's insane. And we ask, hey, if you have the ability, head over to our website. We've got a tip jar on the right side. Show us some love and we definitely appreciate it. Thank you so much. And are you doing a little shopping online? Maybe Amazon or Newegg or even Tiger Direct. Help support the show while shopping for cool stuff online by clicking on the Amazon Newegg and Tiger Direct buttons on our website. Right side, scroll down a little bit. It won't add anything to your charge, but it gives NGNG a little kickback. Great way to support everything we do, even if you don't want to or cannot donate directly. All right. It's week seven, the Catalyst Game Lab sponsorship. And this week we're going to be giving away a hex pack mountain and canyons and there's a link below you can check that out and of course i just want to say congratulations to actually a user on this ts3 it goes out to coffee nail won the Woo. tiro 3039 he was uh picked and i was like wow so uh oh, congrats man hey uh so this is what it packs pack with what mountain and canyon and the last one was lakes and rivers yes dude you can start putting together some cool maps with all this shit yeah we got a, we got a lot more too uh, so we'll get you uh, get you that information as we go along. And of course, you can head over to our website. Uh, I'll be posting it up live after this, so you can enter that as well. Yes, no, Coffee Nail. No yes, Coffee Nail won the uh, 3039 Tiro. And of course, Garth's back. Welcome, Garth. Sorry you uh, well, you weren't feeling too good last week, um, so you had to bug out. I was gonna say, how's your uh, h- how do you feel after yesterday's ass whooping on Twitch? We we uh, that, that was pretty brutal. Yeah. That was brutal. Are you still sore? I am. A little bit. I went 4-0 today, though, so... Nice. That's better. Yeah. Um, we were... You know, it's always tough, too, because, like, we, we really enjoy it, but on the flip side, people who watch and then play, you know, they're, you know, they're like, listening, and Darren's like, Gar's like, don't tell them where we're going. I'm like, well, they're watching anyway, so it doesn't matter. But starting tomorrow, we'll be on a delay, so, uh, yeah, have fun with that one. Suckers. Wait, yeah. I thought we were already on a delay. No, we're... Well... I'm inducing another set of delay on top oh, of it. So it's only a mental delay. Yeah. Yeah. So four seven for me, man. And now when we lose, we'll have to think of a different excuse. Yeah, definitely blaming it on Darren. Uh, the beard may not like it, but uh, well, just have to suck it up. Tough. Anyways, guys. So this past week, uh, let's see. We just had a Tuesday patch day, and let's go ahead and jump into this. And, and today, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Obviously, there was some uh, changes that happened. Uh, let's see. We had the uh, quick draw. Obviously, um, did you guys enjoy? I'm assuming you guys enjoyed that type of video and stuff. And I just want to say, good job on that uh, showdown video, Darren. Um, I think I've not really heard any negativity towards it, uh, other than that. Uh, yeah, they wanted the mech to die yeah, because of it. ballistic i don't know so i no, did what, not what people it. what people wanted actually speaking of george is they wanted voiceover so i'm working on something yeah how are you well darren you mm-hmm. did one i thought that was great no but i'm gonna work on something with professional voiceover people george 
Real people? <laughs> yeah, not, not your imaginary friends, Darren. No, the, <laughs> see, the problem with the voices in my head is nobody else hears them, so they sound great to me, but yeah. They just I don't understand. come through on the mic? Not at all. All right, so we had uh, the June 18th patch come out. Uh, there were some changes to weapons, uh, large pulse, small pulse, machine guns, uh, a few other changes here and there, the three, uh, three quick draws, the 5K, the 4H, and the 4G. Um, and obviously we had also as well coming up is the June 20th hotfix, and that is tomorrow. So just a heads up for those people in the live audience who join us on the Twitch event. It'll actually be going an hour early. So we're going to go from uh, 8 to 10 a.m., PST. So just keep that in mind. We'll be kicking it off a little bit early because it's supposed to be like an hour downtime. So we want to catch it before that goes. So uh, stay tuned for that. But anyways, I just want to ask, uh, open it up, uh, you know, X up. If you have something you want to talk about on this past patch, do you like the quick draw? Um, do you have issues with it? Uh, or, you know, anything when it, when it comes to this current patch on Tuesday, uh, what are some things that you guys want to talk about out there? Let's talk about Max, baby. Nice. That was for you, Garth. This is where you guys X up, and then we tell you to unmute, and then you can talk and discuss <laughs> and have the social connectivity. It's it's crazy. So from here on out, the show is completely dependent on you guys. All right, so we got one Kalos sex. Hello again, guys. Ah, Kalos. I was just wondering if you thought that the the newest thing that in patch, of course, is a quick draw. Two of the variants are very, very close to one another. Is it enough of a difference to make it really worth it to you? Or, I mean, I bought all three of them just because I like them. But I think a lot of people are probably thinking, well, they're just, they're not differentiated enough. What do you think? How many of you out there were hoping that the 4H would have a ballistic hard point? Yeah, I mean, when I looked at them, I thought I'll just buy the 4H, not get the 4G. But of course, you need all three to uh, elite them and master them. So I got all three. Well, I'm right there with you. I was looking at this last night, and I was actually talking to a short painter. We were playing um, a little bit last night, talking, and you know, obviously, you do have the missile hard point difference. Um, the 4H has, you know, three, and uh, the 4G only has two. But what the 4G also has is the seven jump jets, or at least it's capable of having. Now, that being said, is it beneficial to drop seven tons of jump jets in the particular? Uh, you know mech and I would almost say no um, unless unless things change I, I really don't see the benefit because okay that's seven tons and to really be any you know to be viable for the maneuverability factor you also have to be relatively quick well stock standard 300 goes 81 speed tweak you know you're pushing what close to 90 all right well I still don't think that's quick enough. So either you have to upgrade your engine to either a bigger standard, which then reduces as far as your you know your armament, or you drop an XL into it, which I don't think is a problem uh, for this particular mech. Um, but so I think I think it's give and take. So I don't know if just basically off the hard points alone, if it makes any difference between the two. So where the weather one can have two SRM sixes and an SRM four, or maybe you just drop in you know three SRM sixes or something like you know. I don't know. I don't think it's a big deal, but I'm glad they didn't like, I don't know. Uh, would you guys would have been irritated if they would just made up their own variant and just sort of like some of the hero mechs because there wasn't really anything out there? I mean, I think the I, quick draw trying to stay canon was a challenge. Sorry, Kalos, go ahead. Well, I was thinking that PGI is probably now that they have well over 50 some battle mechs, was it closer to 70? They might actually start running into the problem like, well, these, I mean, take a thug versus like a awesome 8T, I think it, they're identical for the most part, other than the graphics of it. Well, so we're going to start running into overlaps on, on a lot of these. And I don't think that. that's a problem, though. And I think some people were a little bit disappointed about the quick draw in general. They are like, oh, well, I would rather, I would have rather had different mech or whatever. And at the end of the day, you're going to have overlap. I mean, that's a part of Battletech, you know. But what's unique is the, as far as NMWO, is the aesthetics of it. The, the torso twist rate, the hard points, does it have jump chests, does it not? You know, how fast, all those little nuances, which obviously we're going to see in UI 2.0. But I know Seth um, X'd up as well. Do you have any comments towards this, Seth? No, no. My question was about the uh, uh, the frame rate button, F9, being removed. We'll, we'll come back so, to that. Let's, yeah, let's yeah, just yeah, finish up on this. Too. There was another yeah, X. I think Wild, uh, shot. Wild, Wild shot, shot had an X. Uh, thank you. Uh, in regards, I trying out a uh, quick draw with the 
360 XL engine and seven jump jets. Uh, only tried a couple runs so far. Uh, died pretty quick, but I'm used to being in a Jenner or a catapult. Uh, also, regards to patch, um, it noted that this size, excuse me, size yep. module had a uh, tweak to it. I was just curious what the tweak was. Actually, don't know. Um, Garth, do you know? I don't think there was one just yet. Not yet, no. Okay. Now, as far as the quick draw, I, I'm sort of up in there. I need to play it more. It just came out yesterday, so I, I feel like it needs to be out for like a month before we really like really see how it's used. Is is it used? I mean, it's always tough because everyone's like, "Well, why would I take a quick draw over a Jaeger mech or a catapult or a cataphract or you know, obviously, is the Orion is going to be coming out the 75 ton? It's really tough because context, right? The context of price or weight or you know, right now there or is casual. No, Competitive. Yeah, so when it comes to that, um, I feel like the quick draw, uh, I, I was following a discussion over at Reddit and it was talking about whether or not you should put an XL or standard in it. Now, obviously, you've got both sides of the coin. One will argue this, one will argue that, and it's really, it's up to your play style. But one thing I will say is um, about this is why is it so damn big? Have you guys noticed that? Like the quick draw is literally as tall as taller than a stalker and it's like on par with a awesome i just that's gonna affect how easy it is to hit i mean uh, how do you guys feel about that brandon i've always always felt the sense of scale has been a little bit off um even with like the centurion and stuff like that the centurion stands really tall for a medium mech like uh i'm just looking at a picture laser angel just posted and you can see the difference between like a jenner all, all the way up but Obviously, that you start to see is a lot of the mediums and heavies and assaults. Like the quick draw is literally as tall as the Highlander. For me, for it being at the low end, the lowest part of being a heavy, why is it that tall? Because that makes it an easier target, and I, I feel like it should be a lot, a little bit smaller, and a little bit harder to hit. And that's just my personal opinion. Have you ever seen those graphics for like uh, Eve Online? They used to have the big images that showed every single ship in the, their scale size to each yep, other. Yep, there's 3D ones now too. Yeah. So is there one like that for the mechs? I would really like to well, see it side by side. To I, really I, see I, exactly. I've seen them. Per- I've seen them personally. Um, and if you look at that link uh, that was just posted, that's what he's talking about. And it's literally as tall as a Highlander. So I, I feel maybe, and I don't know how difficult this would be, that Thank it you, needs Garth. to be adjusted. Um, I feel like that would be a big thing for me. I mean, it, it's 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 going to be rough for the quick draw because it's limited in the amount of weapons it can take. It needs speed to survive, but if you drop more weapons in it, you're not going to have the speed. And obviously the maneuverability with the jump jets, I feel like it plays into, is it hard to hit? Just like the spider, right? The spider is a relatively hard mech to hit, especially with the jump jets, it bouncing around and everything. And I feel like the quick draw is is supposed to be on the low end and it's supposed to have that maneuverability and it makes up in its survivability with that maneuverability and a sort of lacking firepower um does anybody else i mean anybody else feel this way about it or yeah i mean with an xl360 and seven jumps jets it's insanely fast and maneuverable for the for the mech that it is but you're definitely limited on weapons, so you have to make that choice one way or the other. I think, and you're right, I think we have to give it a good couple weeks, even to up to a month, of people fucking around with it and just seeing what works and what doesn't. I mean, just me looking at, you know, the picture and the scale and it being that big, and I noticed that in game. I was like, man, this thing looked massive, and I'm like, it's 60 ton. It's supposed to be, it's smaller than the cataphract as far as weight in the catapult. Like, what? You know why is it that big so anyways uh that's one thing maybe i would like to see addressed um you know garth i don't know if you have any insight or you know we can ask paul or you know one of the artists or something like that but scale has always been one of those questions that uh a lot of people have wondered about you know i mean i can ask the artists about this one yeah awesome man um let's see what else did we have we had the large poles and small poles come up um as far as changes in the machine guns how do you guys like the machine guns do you feel like it's like, well, do you guys using them now? I mean, what, what's going on with that? Real quick, let's go back to Seth's question and then move okay, on to that since gotcha. he did uh, X up. So, Seth, you want to ask that again? Yeah, I had a question about the the frame rate capture on the F9. Uh, I know it said it was removed to be re- reworked, but uh, I was curious to know why it had to be removed in the meantime. It's, it's something I use fairly often when I'm recording video. So, that's what I was curious about. It gives a lot of coordinates away. 
Yeah, that's what we heard. That's what I was kind of reading about on on Reddit, but you know, there wasn't really any coordinates of what though. On you the can map? figure out other people's coordinates. Uh, what, what? For uh, enemies? Uh, yes. Yeah, I gave the X, Y, and Z location. I'm I'm confused. Are you talking about when someone is streaming or a video? Like, I, what do you mean? I mean, when someone has it on, there's something that's showing. Like, can you explain that? How how would that affect someone having that on? You'd have to get someone a little more versed in this to explain it, but uh, as far as I knew, you could just figure out locations of enemy players via memory locations. Do you have to you be mean, like a computer hacker? Are, are, hold on, are you talking about like via the console? I mean, like how would uh, me as a player in the cockpit see someone else's information? Garth, are you feeling pressure right now? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just not going to go run over and be like, hey guys, come over here for a minute. No, okay. I'm just curious because it, it doesn't really make any sense. Like if... Um, if I'm in the cockpit of my mech and I have my FPS counter on, unless I'm streaming, which if I'm streaming, it doesn't matter if they can see the coordinates where I'm at, they can see where I'm at on the map. So it, I'm wondering how yeah, does that- Yeah, there is an aimbot versus this that was going on, or could have gone on, so we turn it off. E, so this has to do with more of the those issues, okay. So that's the official answer, whether there's more sinister things in the makings, we don't know, but uh, yeah. We did it no. to high player numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, Seth, too, I use it quite a bit, and I've noticed uh, with the latest patch, now I haven't cleared my shader files. Maybe I need to do that just to get rid of the old stuff, but I've noticed a frame drop um, in from the light, latest patch. I've mean, noticed it a few times. and Which is, uh, isn't that what the, the hotfix is about a little bit? Um, I think the hotfix is for net oh, le ish, yeah, network. Yeah. Yes. Dang, sorry. And that that's actually something to you know talk about as well is um supposedly Ping. there was some there was some miscommunication and all those network i think carl posted up um about that basically like hey um this is what the issue is it was like an underlying cry engine um like at the very bottom like a very low level and those changes were supposed to go in and they didn't um now that being said don't know how that would be missed but um it's supposed to come out tomorrow and that's supposed to address a lot of the issues some it was very technical. Uh, I'm not even going to try to explain it because it would just be horrible. Well, why don't we go back to your machine gun question now? Yeah. Well, I saw a spider yesterday that was just holding down the machine guns the entire time. Is that like, is that how we want machine guns to be? Like where you don't have to worry, you just straight, like, do you guys like them? Like them? No? Are no? You, what are you saying? That they're open? I still have never used machine guns, and I never see myself using them. But what I'm saying is, like, you just hold down the trigger. The most annoying thing to the spider using it against me yesterday was just the noise. That's it. That was see, <laughs> psychological warfare. That's what I've always said. <laughs> no, I just but, I, but wanted to, I wanted to kill it quicker because it was just annoying. That's all. Yeah, but, but see, the machine guns sound so cool. That's why Indeed. a lot of people exactly. use them. Because they sound so cool. Now, if they were as good to use as they sound, then they this, we wouldn't be They'd be OP. <laughs> I mean, what are your guys' thoughts out there? I mean, X up if you have opinions, how do you like them? Because yeah. obviously we don't have a lot of them here. Syllogy? Syllogy. What's up, man? You know, I had the same question and I went ahead and loaded up my, uh, my DD Jaeger with six machine guns and it actually does a surprising amount of damage per second yeah you gotta hold it on target but it will throw out more than my two er ppcs combined interesting yeah i gotta give them a, a little bit more of a test myself i do have my uh, dd set up to use them but i haven't dropped with it yet since the patch all right so it's it's got a higher dps potential but do you like it's always been tough i mean really i mean if we break it down machine guns in general uh I think they're getting very close to being effective if they're not there already, and they're totally uniquely different as far as how they work compared to all the other weapons, so I'm absolutely fine with them. Okay, so machine guns, for the most part, it's a translation from the tabletop. Uh, machine guns have a modifier to you know infantry and light vehicles and stuff, so they're deadlier and stuff like that against those vehicles. They do do damage against Max. They, you know, they're... Do, do, do. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, crit seekers and stuff like that. Woo. So the thing with it is is obviously translating that to MWO is you don't want to make them just basically a mini autocannon per se I mean at that point that's all they are you know they weigh half a ton and so I don't know I mean do you think they're viable now that they do DPS but would you take a machine gun over a autocannon uh, 2 or 5 or some other ballistic 
Um, but maybe it fills in that gap for the light mechs to where they don't have the tonnage to use those heavier weapons. So they just throw on a few, you know, a few ballistics. Maybe they have like, I don't know, the uh, Raven as well with the ballistic hard point and stuff like that. I mean, do you guys I feel think like that they're almost close to being perfect because there's a, quite a lot of people that like using them, but nobody really feels like they're OP as compared to some other weapons like, say, PPCs. That's a pretty good metric. Um, and I do think they fill a role because the tonnages, I mean, compared a machine gun to an AC2 tonnage wise, there is no comparison. A machine gun is way lighter. So while you have to spend the hard point on it, if you're using your tonnage for other things and you don't need a heat sink or you don't need an AMS or something like that, you could do worse. Well, what I'm saying is like, you can imagine if you don't have a whole lot of tonnage left over and instead of like, I would rather have the machine guns potentially used in the you know circumstance of well i've got a raven or a commander or whatever uh a spider and i only have like a ton and a half left over but instead of me throwing that towards like a bigger engine or more armor or heat sinks i'm like oh well i could do a little bit of dps you know i could throw on a uh you know a machine gun and some you know one ton of ammo and stuff like that all right um so I'll, I don't know, maybe I do need to hop in and just throw as many as I can on a, you know, DD, uh, Jägermack DD, I don't know, maybe just for just for fun, just to sort of see. But all right, so uh, another topic that uh, came up with the patch is the change to small pulse lasers and large pulse lasers. There was no change to medium. And, uh, you know, via Paul, he basically said it was to bring them in line with the other weapon systems. Now, what this did is it uh, increased the damage of the large pulse but it also increased the heat. How do you guys feel? Like, they're hot, they still do quite a bit of damage, um, but did it need changed? And uh, if so, um, do you like it, don't like it, or whatever? Let's see, uh, Laser Angel, go ahead. Didn't, uh, isn't that a stopgap? I remember Paul saying that was a stopgap. Like, this is one change, and then there will be another one later. I have no idea, actually. I didn't hear that. Um, my understanding was that this was considered possibly a viable solution um but yeah i don't think it is so uh, one thing i do want to point out uh is that i can understand if this change was made in sort of a hindsight of um the potential of this weapon being you know the same issue with the ppcs right high amount of alpha damage and when i say alpha i, I just mean pinpoint accurate you know you throw a bunch on on there so if that was because of this because of that sort of forethought okay cool does it fit into that but does it you know um let's see laser angel i know xed up do you uh do you have a comment oh it's just that uh these numbers feel a bit i i understand what he's trying to bring all of them into like a certain heat ratio and a certain dps ratio but it was just too much and they probably need to rework the numbers i might have seen large pulse lasers twice and i still haven't seen small pulse lasers but they they work with the numbers again i know if you throw enough numbers at it and you might get it right and no one carries medium pulse lasers either well Except actually i don't know if you saw yesterday in twitch i ran across a jenner and an x5 that had um small pulse remember the 4p with the holy nine? crap man like those small pulse I, I don't know about the large pulse i didn't run into them uh, yesterday but the small pulse from what I've read from everyone's feedback, I saw someone post over at Reddit, on the forums, um, and stuff like that. Small Pulse, they seem seem to be good to go. Like, it does a lot of d damage, and so they're basically saying you could take something like to the effect of some long-range weapons, even LRMs, but you throw Small Pulse in to sort of, in case that light or something comes, you know, crawling up on you. So I think yeah, I, I like Small that. Pulse are good to go. But that Large Pulse, I it's guess what I'm- tons, man. People would rather have a PPC. Okay, so let, let's look at uh, let's look at that. So take a PPC or a large pulse. Now, obviously, the large pulse as well only takes up two crit spaces. I don't know if that's really a worry, but uh, when you're looking at something like that, but range is a big thing, right? Large pulse, it's an effective range of what 180 uh, meters, and then basically about double that, and it starts falling off after that 180. Whereas the PPC or ER PPC, either way, um, 300, 600 on the large pulse. Okay, 300, 600. And then on the, that's small pulse, my bad. Um, it's all right. When you look at the PPC, you've got an effective range of, you know, 600 up to 800, you know, meters. So do I you see people it? Want, people, want, people want the pulse lasers to be a brawling laser. I've heard things of 
try to do what uh, Mech Warrior 3 did, where you kind of hold the button down and it has a capacitor, and if you drain all the burn time, it just recycles completely. So if he like ducks behind cover, you can un you can take your finger off the trigger and not burn all that heat off. And then once you get him back into sight, just blast him again, full capacitor, and then it cycles up again. Well, or, uh, you, well, I'm ahead. looking at the mechanics Razor of the weapon. Guns. I'm Laser looking at the mechanics guns. of the, the the weapons themselves. Like, look at the large pulse versus a PPC. Okay, the PPC, uh -huh. it's instantaneous damage to that location wherever you hit, right? That amount of damage, boom. Whereas the large pulse, you have to keep said, uh, you know, um, crosshair on the target on whatever location. So you can basically spread that damage out. So again, I feel like uh, if we're comparing two different systems. We're comparing a a duration weapon, right? Even though the the pulse laser is just a uh, 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 lower uh, duration than like a regular beam, you know, large yeah. laser. Um, so you can do as more little little bit more damage but obviously it's a you have a chance to miss as well anyways but the pbc it's instantaneous boom wherever you hit that much damage so yeah, I, I guess i like garth's suggestion where he says zero recycle time lots of heat in the chat hold it down whoa, 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 whoa. yeah hey. that, that's another thing i'd like <laughs> like mech warrior 2 gun. mech warrior 2 style uh yeah, do you like guys remember how gun. well no do you remember how mech warrior 2 did it I have never played it, so please tell me. Okay, you never played Mechwarrior 2? I, I I had the CD, but I couldn't get it to install right on my computer. So okay, let me let me break down how like a medium laser would work. Is you literally hold down the space bar, and it would be like boom, 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 boom. Now they handled their lasers differently. It was more like darts. It wasn't uh, it wasn't a beam like how MWO has it. So um, you could effectively a take. You could take one. Uh, you could take a medium mech with one medium laser and throw down like a ton of firepower. Now, granted, what was the trade-off? You your heat would you know rise up very very quickly. But you know you look at like MWO. You have one medium laser on a uh, commando. You're never going to overheat, right? Because duration, fire, cool off. Yeah. Duration, cool, cool fire, down, cool, cool off. Down, exactly. You you never have to worry about shutting down and, and getting that da uh, you know damage out there. But um. So, all right, large pulse may or may not be a good or bad thing. Um, I want to test it out personally. Um, I think I can hop in a few matches tonight and try the the large are pulse you, out. Are but you sure you want to go on the record with that? Yeah, I have go no problem. I've used large. Not be a good thing. I've used large pulse uh, before. Um, what I'm saying is, I just don't have enough. It just happened yesterday. I don't think any of us have any yeah. data. You know, we like need some weeks. Yeah, we need we we need some time. Like I do know though, Versinix and some of the Foxy. I think Foxy Short Press would roll around in his four large poles stalker all the time, and dude, they racked up a whole. And this was prior to this this change, and they racked up quite a bit of points. Now, what did they sacrifice? They sacrificed range. So it's sort of like going with like, you know, uh, AC twenties. You know, you sacrifice quite a bit t to have that punching power. But you also have to get up in their face, so yeah. And there's always exceptions to the rule, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah, let's see if, uh, of course, there's the issue of PPCs and alpha and all that, and we can continue um, touching on that. But let's see if there's anything that they want to talk about out there in the audience. If there's anything you want to bring up right now, X up and boo. Let us know. Yeah, what's on your guys' mind? Okay, Moonsword. Good morning. Can you all hear me well? Yes, hey, we can, man. I've actually got a question that's relating to the controls. I know that we do have joystick support, but is there any plans to bring in something like rudder pedal support for those who want to make it more of an authentic simulator experience? Well, that's a good question. Actually, I've been, uh, over the last few weeks, thinking about getting some rudder pedals. Um, people were basically watching some of the videos I've done, and they can tell that I'm turning with my mouse and keyboard uh, because it's kind of herky-jerky or whatever. And they said it's so much smoother turning with your rudder pedals. Plus, I want to set them up so that when you slam them both to the floor, that's your jump jet. So I would like to use them. Oh, I see what you did there, reference to in the novels. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, to be honest, I haven't used uh, the joystick since MechWarrior 4. Now, I did. I use semi quasi. I use joystick and the keyboard. Um, but I've used mouse and keyboard now for my gaming for years. So, I don't know. I think I do pretty well. I, I think it's like with anything, though, you give it enough time and you're going to get better. So, you, you know, like when you hop on, use the joystick right off the bat, it may not be as, you know, it, it'll take some time getting used to it. But, um,. What about the the joystick, the whole Razor uh, setup for uh, MWO? What do we have any word on that, Garth? The the Artemis? 
I have no idea because that's not us. Is it dead? Okay, someone's it's saying it's dead. dead. On hold indefinitely. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's Basically. something we can ask Brian, um, Brian and, and Russ about. Like, what's up? Is there any more news about it? Now, at the same time, when the Artemis came out, uh, what, the other controller for Hawken, it was pretty much like the same thing, a little bit different setup. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> George is saying he uses can an we Xbox talk about controller. Fall is Windows 8 only. I want to talk about that. Oh, jeez! Don't even get me started. <laughs> Microsoft, what the hell? Are you that? idiotic really oh by the way uh for those that really? haven't followed the whole e3 xbox one ps4 xbox just today posted that they're not doing the uh 24 7 online thing anymore so you don't have to have that so they've already backtracked on that um as well as if you have a disc um uh game you don't have to be connected to the internet anyways i was just basically asking because i was looking at setting up a artificial cockpit sort of thing down the in the future Mm, a sim pit, huh? Oh, by the way, Darren, did you, um, uh, we had a guy contact us about, um, uh, if we did have an NGNG con that he had a sim pit that he wanted to bring. Did you get that email? Yep. Yeah. That's freaking oh, awesome. Speaking of that, by the way, guys, um, we are possibly planning a gathering NGNG con in late September. It's not confirmed yet, but I'm just throwing that out there, as Phil would say, uh, so that some of you can uh, maybe plan a little bit. We're somewhere in California, late September. So more news as that develops. Mm. I mean, is there like a really want and need for more joystick support out there? I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like I said, I don't use one. Haven't used one forever. Um, is that something that everyone wants just for the immersion or is it more just for the, the accuracy, smoothness? I mean, what? Um, I think that there's probably a lot of uh, desire for joystick uh, support. However, I'm not one of those people. You're not one of those? Is that what you said? Those? The bottom line is precision for me. Uh, pedals and maybe a throttle on the left side, I might go that far, but I would never do the joystick because, I mean, I've practiced. You're right, it does take practice, but even when you're getting it down, it's just not as precise as a mouse. It can't be. Well, I mean, if you train long enough it with it. It can't be. I'm just saying. Me too. Throwing that out there. Mice is better. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we got a few other things um, that uh, obviously one thing uh, I want you to sort of look towards is Russ Bullock posted this on his Twitter account, and we don't really know what it means, uh, but uh, maybe Garth does. Is uh, And I quote, we have something you're going to like, but we're not going to announce it until after E3. Noise, noise dies down, but in June. Okay, Spill Garth. the beans, Garth. No, it, it'll do be it. soon, like actual soon. Not well, like we do, Valve we do know what like next. Trademark. We do know next month you guys are doing the whole um, public um, uh, test server, right? That's happening next month, right? Yes. So, is it in? I don't know. Maybe we just need a bug. Uh, I just, for us. I just hope it's actually something really cool and not like way back when when you know they were going oh this is gonna be some really cool stuff and they had all this like super secret things on the forum and ended up being like oh look a keyboard and mouse come on <laughs> it's the going to be a new miniature mech for your cockpit <laughs> right <laughs> yeah yes. instead of a 50 caliber it'll be a 30 caliber bullet Ooh. yes it'll be a 303 yeah <laughs> All right, so we have to wait on that. I think a lot of people are like, oh, we want to see the clans. Uh, yeah. You, it's an Irby. Timberwolf. It's gonna Timberwolf. Be, it's going to be a freaking Irby. Oh, my so gosh. So I have a question. Um, it's not going to be a picture, all right? Let's stop I'm, that now. I think with most people we talk, or at least a lot of the people that are hanging out here, uh, casual gamers, do a lot of random drops maybe with uh, a few friends or whatever. But how has this latest patch affected... Um, the more competitive side is anybody dropping eight mans on a regular basis. What's happened or what hasn't happened? I think a lot of people just from who I've talked to. <laughs> we should ask P Smash. <laughs> a lot of people I've talked to that are involved with a lot of the tournaments and stuff are just ready uh, to be able to do matchmaking. Um, I forget what tournament it was. It was this past week. But they oh, said yeah, we they got a congrats, Pizza P on getting his one v one thing. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, what I was going to say, I think it was the run, hunter die. I want to say it was that tournament, but it took no, them no, no. like two hours to 
get their matches in because all of this, you know, basically having a sink drop, you know, and it, I feel like the, that side, the competitive side, once, once matchmaking allows them to be able to say, hey, our eight man or 12 man group can play your 12 man group and do that on, you know, it'll probably alleviate so many issues. And then on top of that, obviously community warfare, but, um, yeah, well, I, I was talking with Aces the other night, and we were practicing with uh, lower weight limits, you know, for tournament stuff or whatever. And so we were not all dropping in atlases and whatever else, uh, stalkers. And it took a long time to get matches, because um, obviously we weren't compatible with the other teams out there that were running stalkers and atlases. Right, no. And... no, we did have a carry on, um, carry on crows. Can you unmute and just talk about, you know, what you were just saying? I, like, I honestly want to hear if oh, people's, yeah. like... If, if, if there's issues, if there's actual problems, like, speak up. I mean, it, you know, need to, to bring those to light. Well, the problems for Q and for 8 man is relatively, I mean, there's no weight limit set, so everyone just takes whatever they want. And most of the time, it's the bigger max. The stalkers, the, you know, the stalkers, atlases, uh, highlanders, all those max, but there's no weight limit. And so when you get a, a team that's trying to practice, is, you know, practice with lower uh, half line, it's funny. When you get a team that's trying to practice with lower weight limits, you know, you, they take a couple mediums or whatever, they just end up getting slaughtered. And so most people are usually end up shying away from the eight mans just because there's no sense of balancing or competitiveness. It's just, you know, bring the biggest gun you find. Okay. Now, I guess what m my question is, is there always, like, do you run into the same setup every single time? Because, um, you know, is just run around and Atlas DDCs and Stalkers the way to go? Or Highlanders, you know, I mean, is that the only way you can win? Or are there other groups that have said, no, with a little bit of, you know, coordination, with a little bit of training, you can bypass it with, you know, a use of some lights and mediums and heavies? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Um, or is it... Um... I, I, I can't give you a definitive answer because it's kind of a, a loaded question for us because most of the time when we do uh, eight man is we will queue with the, uh, another eight man group and try to sync drop it so we both match up so we're both competitive but when we don't get the competitive matches it basically comes down to who has the most tonnage. There are exceptions to that rule where we, you know, we pull off some brilliant plays and tactics wins the match but in the end of the day uh, the bigger the gun the bigger the win. Because it is, it is tough going up against an atlas when you're in a hunchback or a century. I mean, there's, it's, it's, it's just brutal. Especially if there's more, it's more than just a one on one, obviously. Because tonnage does that up, and it's hard to sort of outweigh tonnage with skill. Because at the end of the day, it's not too hard to do, you know, put your crosshair on a target and pull the trigger and stuff like that. But especially with PPCs and high the, the high. Um, I don't think alpha damage, alpha isn't a problem. I think it's the pinpoint accurate and high amount of uh, volley damage. I guess we'll call it volley damage someone can do. Um, you know, when you can hit me in a Centurion and take me from perfect uh, CT to crit internals, and I can only take, you know, barely one more hit, I, I feel like that's, that's an issue. Now, if it's from like two or three other people and that happens, yeah but just one person. So I, I feel like that probably definitely needs to be looked at. Now, uh, when when looking at the competitive, and we all, we know like how other games do it as well, like uh, Darren, you know, World of Tanks, uh, it used to be like when you did Clan Warfare and World of Tanks, it was bring tier nine, tier 10 tanks, and that was it, right? Now, you know, Garth, this would be more question for you, but I think Paul would have to answer it, is with Community Warfare kicking off, is Community Warfare are there going to be restrictions? Are there going to be like rules? Uh, because at the end of the day, any game has to have rules as far as like, so is it just going to be bring whatever you want? 12 max? No, there will be rules. Okay, so there will be rules for community warfare. As far as like, I attack your planet, you're defending, we can bring X amount of, you know, something, whether it's tonnage or specific Logistics. types of... Yeah, because I mean, you know, that's just, that's just one thing that... I feel like needs to be done because what happens if you don't carry on? I mean, when you don't have any rules right now, the context is just basically to win, right? Exactly. And the other smaller side of it is the maps really aren't that big. So, I mean, you can hit people out to, you know, 1,600 meters, 2,200 meters with a little bit of shot. So it's not like taking a medium or a little bit faster mech gives you that much more bonus. Gotcha. And, you know, obviously you've got the, uh, right now you've got Assault and Conquest, which basically boils down to kill the other team, outcap them, or tie them. Those are your three outcomes for, for Assault or Conquest right now. Obviously Conquest has more cap points, so, you know, but I mean, at the end of the day, those are your three 
things you have to do no matter what the game mode is now that being said how opposed are you guys to seeing other like game modes to where you can bring in multiple mechs like I, i'm pretty excited about that um just even in the random matchmaking you know to be able to drink bring four mechs and uh you know drop or something like that i think and just me personally I, you know war thunder if you guys have never played war thunder like you would bring in x amount of however many planes now you may lose those mechs uh or you may lose those planes but then you'd You'd make a tactical decision. Do I bring the sort of the bigger, slower one at the very beginning? Do I bring the faster one? Do I sort of bring the middle? How do you guys feel about that? You always bring the pony plane. Pony? Always. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, different modes is definitely necessary. I know they're on the way. Um, you know, uh, let's see, who does it? Um, Impaler does Team Speak Tuesdays. Resynix does the um, Mech Madness. Uh, who's doing the one versus one tournaments? Um, that's not one of our guys. It's uh, Kong, maybe? Anyway, um, I think people are dying for some change uh, out of the conquest and the assault. And uh, sorry, Laser, I don't know who it is, but somebody's doing 1v1 that keeps inviting us, and we haven't been able to do it yet. Oh, but, the MWO Arena. Is that what you're talking yes, about? Yes, yes, yes. Who's doing that? Um, I'd have to look up. Someone probably knows in here. But yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, w people are completely making things up just to do different stuff which i think is great and um bodes well for new match modes coming and, and i feel i feel like it, you we have to say again that it's one of those things and i darren's sort of hyped on this so much is patience and i know it sucks uh you know we want everything right now we want like snap your fingers garth go fix everything like make everything community warfare is out tomorrow sort of thing we want that obviously we, but in doing so you have to be realistic and say it's a development team. Things do take time. And, you know, not so far in the future, but we got 12v12, UI 2.0, Community Warfare, obviously the phases, uh, they talked about this a few times in the Ask the Devs 40, Phase 1, Phase 2, and stuff like that. So it's not hey, far off. And I'm just like, of oh. Garth. Yes, I have to leave, everyone. I'm sorry. No. All right, well, Garth, so tomorrow. It's good to have you back, man. Garth, tomorrow, we got the delay. And so hopefully it'll negate these guys listening in and watching. Better win record. Yeah, so if we lose, then we have to blame Darren. <laughs> and if you guys are losing when I get there. <laughs> yeah, You'll just pretend like, that. like you don't come into work, won't you? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, about Sorry, that. Sorry, guys, I'm stuck on as, as long as you don't bring <laughs> Kyle and we get River City six times in a row. I mean, what uh, the <laughs> hell, man? That is incredible. Anybody Bye, else? Guys. See you later. Later, Garth. See you, Garth. Bye, Garth. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what was up with that, like, we had River City Night, River City, River City Night, River City, River City, River City Night. And I was like, are you serious right now, Kyle? Yep. All right. Uh, now, obviously, there are. we did have a few questions from community questions on our forums. And make sure to head over to our forums and post those. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive into these. Some of these, um, I think we can answer. Some of them may have to wait uh, for Garth. I was hoping <laughs> he'd stick around. but yeah, I was going to say, now that Garth's gone, let's get those, well, to those I was hoping, because it's still a little bit early. Uh, it's still got about 14 minutes, but he had to head out. So what can you do? Um, but uh, Lord Ica says, I think most of the community, at least those that were at closed beta, are looking forward to the return of collisions. My question is this. Will specific mechs, such as the Dragon, have a higher impact value due to their shape? Will the mech collisions be simply based on tonnage speed? Now, I'm not going to presume to know this, but I'm going to go out and limb and say I would prefer it based on tonnage and speed. I don't want like one mech being more prone to knock someone over because you guys remember that freaking dragon, dragon bowling? bowling? No. And for those that weren't in the closed beta, no thank you. It was it was the most frustrating thing ever when a dragon would throw on the largest engine it could, XL wise, it would run around and just knock you and your buddy over and poke you to death with it. small lasers. It, so, no. No. Thank you. It was beautiful. No. That sounds like a lot of fun, to be honest with you. Yeah. But, I was going to say, but isn't that, like, truer physics than no collisions? you got to look at fun and game, like, the game design. Fun. It's not... No. That's a behavior that I hope they do not allow. Well, I think That's there's a lot me. of people that would disagree with that. Um, Why do you hate you Sonic weren't though? there, George. You have no idea. <laughs> no, but I. You weren't there, George. So I am going to say, no, no. I'm going to say, you have no firsthand experience of dealing with the system. It no, was not fun. Phil Sean's hates still fun. Go, Phil's still going to therapy for it. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that was not know fun. You weren't there. Uh, but uh, Carry On Crow X'd up. Go, do you got an uh, input on this? Yeah, I think I really like to bring back Legends, but it has to be done in a certain way that there's a, like a system to it. Like, as I was pointing out in one of my videos, is that if you run over rough terrain or you do something like really crazy, like fall from a great height, try to go up a hill that's too steep, it should unbalance your uh, unbalance your gyro. Then if you take a collision, like a, another, mech hit, another mech hits you or you take a serious amount of damage, then it should knock you over. But apart from that, I mean, you shouldn't be in danger of being knocked over from just like bumping into things because your gyro should handle that. Well, remember too, is it's not your gyro that's handling it. It's your uh, onboard computer um, that's handling it with obviously the gyro input. Um, it's it, your computer is pretty advanced. Anyways, not getting on the work, but how far do they go down into that? How realistic do they make it? I mean, the, the reality of things are is this is a computer game that's simulating these things and you know, do you make it as sim-based as possible and realistic as possible when that re reality thing would just not be fun? So, again, looking at how the dragon used to bowl over it, like everything, it didn't matter what it was. The dragon would run into an atlas. There goes the atlas. The dragon wants to be on its feet. Now, for me, when I look at that, I want collisions uh, because I think it does change the game. I mean, and it changed the game for everyone. Uh, if you had an assault mech run into you, it's an assault mech. I mean, unless it's an awesome 9M running at 80 kph, I can understand. But if you let that Atlas run into you at full speed and it knocks you over, well, you know, same thing, remember, with light mechs. You used to know who was a good light mech pilot based off if they didn't get knocked down. Like, it made you, like, totally aware of the scenario. So um, I like the idea of you losing control per se of like running up too steep or falling off but how far do you you take it and i guess what i'm trying to say is as well is like uh, do they put a simple system out there and then get player feedback and say okay we're gonna build on it a little bit make it a little bit more uh deep you know and stuff like that well the way i was going with that is that if you get uh, if you go up those steep inclines or it unbalances you it just tells you on your screen that you're unbalanced then you're susceptible to being knocked down. It doesn't mean you definitely will be knocked down. Yeah, but think how quick that would be. I mean, you're running in a light mech or a medium, 90 plus kph. You run, it would, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you want to punish players? And again, again like I, I think what they said with the going up steep hills, that's going to be fixed in the not too distant future, right? Or at least you're slowed down. Water slows you down and other stuff like that. But uh, how realistic do they make it? And uh, yeah, um, I'm ready for collisions to go back in. So don't don't take this as like a no. I want them back in because it changed everything. Um, but how far down yeah, yeah. the the realistic rabbit hole do they go, and what is realistic Re when realistic to be practical, but uh, simple enough to still be fun. Exactly. Another question we had is a Brawler, and he says, Are there any plans for allowing weapon identification of friendly units similar to the mech info received after a log onto an enemy mech? I think they've actually stated that it's on their to-do list, possibly. Brennan, do you remember if this is... Because we've asked this before, like, knowing what weapon systems our friends have. I think they've said... Um, I don't think they've confirmed anything for the uh, for friendlies yet. Um, I think you can see in the uh, before dropping in the um, they why said, not just why not just attach it to a key that's well I mean obviously they would have to attach it to a key or a key binding but why not just like Q how Q does it for everyone also or, you why know, not have it like in mech 4 or 3 that you can target your friendlies and bring up their yeah, yeah uh, switch through you know cycle through uh, nearest and whatever I don't really know if it matters though I mean I don't know why not? I think I, I the fun know they were talking about that in the UI 2.0 when you were getting the group uh, screens or whatever there. You'd be able to see their mech and their loadout and stuff like that, but I don't think there's been any any, any confirmation of in-game. And I'm sure priority... And yeah, and I'm sure the priority is relatively low compared to like other things like but UI 2.0 uh, and I think, collisions. I think, and... I think targeting friendlies would be by far probably the easiest way to do it because you just cycle through and it'll just automatically just bring up the info in the slots like they would for the enemy. All right, we also had uh, Laser Angel ask, just wondering if there's been any new hires with PGI recently. We don't know. Um, Laser, let's make sure to bug Garth about that next week. 
Uh, we can ask him specifically to uh, ask that. Sorry, I was trying to get, like, I thought he was going to be around for another, like, 20 minutes, but uh, well, let's I see. Him that in the chat screen, he just told me to ask HR, so <laughs> I don't know. Okay, there you go. He's probably not allowed to, you know, or doesn't even know. I mean, he's the community manager. He's not the guy who hires people, so. Which is why we have looking. him on to answer all the questions. I think he's not, not inquiring how many new people. He's just wondering if he's seen new people in the office type of thing. Yeah, I don't know. Um, let's see. It, this is actually a question that was uh, by Midsummer. It's on our forums. And this is something that I think Paul would have to answer. Um, because it has to do with like community warfare and mercenaries and clans and houses and stuff. But the formation of a unit. And he says, basically, there, he had a few questions. But it, it was basically, is there going to be any type of verification process or required for someone to purchase an insignia for a unit? Uh, and the, the reason this gets brought up is a lot like uh, uh, we've talked to, I think, Brian in the past is anytime you have units to be able to upload their own photos there's copyright issues trademark issues obviously um explicit Even material sense. and stuff like that yeah so um something like eve online what eve online does is um when you have to be a corporation or an alliance for x amount of time then you have to submit your thing it has to go through a verification process before ccp will allow it and post it towards your unit or alliance or whatever um i would be totally okay with that and obviously i would assume that's probably how they're going to do it because the reality is they do have to worry about trademark and they can't have you know mickey mouse and you know all that fun stuff giant uh yeah um you guys can see where that's going so i think and i think garth and uh, Brian has sort of stated that that they have to control that content, so it is what it is. Um, Lightning also asked my question about the term packet loss and what is it in detail. Uh, Lightning, if you're listening to this, there's actually uh, a post by Carl on the MWO forums and her command share post that talked about this specifically, the network and packet issue um, that was in CryEngine. Again, we, I'm not going to try to. I don't fully understand it. And I'm not going to try to like give you a breakdown, but make sure to go read it. He gives a really good, uh, uh, good breakdown of what it is. Um, but anyways, it's basically, it's a good thing that they found the issue, sort of roundabout way too. By the way, um, did you guys? Uh, I saw this this past week. It was the when terrain fights back. A look at the terrain and mech warrior tactics. It was specifically towards like the modifiers of uh, forest and rough terrain and stuff like that. Um, if you didn't. Uh, check that out make sure to give it a read um, I really liked it just for the fact that obviously you guys saw me playing with uh, Nico Snow um, a few weeks back when we got the exclusive uh, playthrough of it uh, during Twitch and I really enjoyed it um, you know obviously I get it Ath aesthetically art wise at the time they made a decision to go down you know this path instead of going down the path that I guess most of us in this channel would have liked but that being said when you're in the game and you're playing, the art, to, to be honest, doesn't really matter. I like the style of the uh, terrain and the textures and the use of uh, shadows and environmental assets and stuff like that. So aesthetically of the mechs, I sort of look past it when I'm in game and I really enjoyed it. And I did enjoy, I don't know, how do you guys feel? X up, uh, if, how do you feel about me, the, kinda... well, hold on, the movement and the attack phase? How do you guys feel about that? The sort of the double blind? I enjoyed it because it makes you think and you may jump in one direction and face one way, but you don't know where they're going to go. Like, I, I liked it. Um, do any of you guys have any thoughts on the, you know, X up and... Well, as far as aesthetics while we're waiting for X's, um, one of the things that I noticed about it, like you were saying, you, you were looking past the artwork. For me, it was more... I mean, this is... A tabletop game it could almost be chess and they look a hell of a lot better than chess pieces and so really I'm just all about the gameplay once I start going and tactics and winning and maneuvering and all that stuff I, yeah I don't play I don't pay attention to the the specific art style I mean everything looks good enough for me to where you I'm guys hold on sorry I gotta jump in here you guys are saying NDA NDA guys it's a public video you can talk about anything that's on that video so everything we're talking about right now is on that video uh, you're not breaking any NDA. I mean, come on now. Uh, what I'm saying is, do you like that initiative um, and the, the attack and the movement phase and all that? It's, that's all there is. Well, anyways, I like it, so whatever. No one wants to pipe in there. You're all, oh my god, they're gonna ban me. Um, 
Another uh, update, uh, just for you I'm guys. I'm actually personally taking down names in the background here. Are you? Yeah. It's the NSA. Catch or kill. Watch it out. <laughs> He's listening to you. Oh, jeez. Um, anyways, uh, hopefully um, I'm going to get up with uh, uh, them soon, and I want to do another video like that. I think it was really cool. I want to see what changes or whatever is going on. Um, and hopefully get another Twitch event for you guys in a video. Um, I really enjoyed it and I feel like a lot of people, we saw a lot of feedback too that they had wanted to see an up-to-date uh, video of the game uh, since previously it had been like eight months since there, was, since there was any video at their YouTube channel. It had been eight months since anything was posted um, on their YouTube channel. So I feel like doing more of those and there's people saying that they wanted to see more content before they basically, you know, invested in the, the Founders program. So I can definitely understand that as well. Um, for another update, just just a heads up for you guys, is I just posted up uh, the Blackjack info for Battletech Universe. For those that don't know, it's a small gaming project that me and a small crew are working on. Um, I will let you know within the relatively near future um, the overall game features and um, uh, design. Like a lot of people see the video um, that's on our YouTube channel. And that's actually just a prototype, guys. That's That was me and at the time, uh, Short Painter, learning how to use Unity and saying, can we do this, can we do that? So that being said, what you've seen on screen is actually not any really an example of what the end product will be. So um, I'm really looking forward to showing you guys uh, as we move forward, but you gotta understand it's a very small team and we can only do so much on our free time. So slow things here and there, uh, but uh, Phil. The Blackjack, yes. Phil, can I just ask? It, is your team hiring? Uh, is our team hiring? We're always looking for people with skills, but uh, right now I'm pretty happy with uh, uh, having five people on the team, to be honest. So unless you like... Oh, I was kidding. <laughs> no, no, what I'm saying, unless you have like a, a lot of experience, and if you do, and you can bring that to the table, yes, Which please know, contact George me. Which we know does not. But no, what I, I'm, I'm being honest, because yes. I've had a few artists and stuff contact me, um, but I'm looking for people that I don't have to teach, I guess. And it sounds sort of mean, but I don't have the time to do that. And neither does any of the other guys. So so, so what you're saying is that George is not the official sound effects of every single sound effect in the game? He'll be like, laser, pew, pew, pew. And then machine gun, bang, bang. Yeah, I think that would fit. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd well, pay for a sound pack. I'd, I'd, I'd hey, that, George... <laughs> George, I know with any serious time, you can always do better sound work than that other title that had mechs. Um, I don't know nothing about that. Yeah, don't know nothing. Moving on. <laughs> All I know is I got paid, and I left the building. <laughs> um... We've got Battletech, the board game. Obviously, thank you again to Catalyst Game Labs for sponsoring NGNG with the giveaways, but the Alpha Strike final cover Holy shit, mech porn. I posted this up on our Facebook as soon as I saw it. I thought it was damn sexy. Yes, yes, and yes. Yes. Uh, Alex, you are a mech porn god. Just just gonna throw that out there. Yeah. Why do we have to use the term porn? <clears throat> because that's what it is. It's mech porn. Are Wait. you offended, George? Oh, I well, so, uh, well I'm you know, I just, I just don't see why we have to use that word. That just seems so mean. Anyway, um, moving on. George is <laughs> referencing somebody that actually complained yeah, that we used the word porn. Well, they can get over it because if you're ensuing anything, that's your own thing. So whatever, it's, it is what it is. It's mech porn. Get over it. I like them pictures. They're cool. It's hot, wet, dripping, steamy. Porn delicious. No, it's hard. It's metal. It's got rivets. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, you can check that out. The final cover. Head over there. Uh, they've got a few deals. And of course, uh, we're trying to get Randall back on the show to talk about a few of the updates. And again, uh, we had Brent Evans on a few podcasts ago talking about the uh, the art and the direction and how he got involved with it. thought that was really cool. And it's amazing to like have these people on the show because I'm like, you know, like I grew up, you know, playing with some of the things they created so i think that's really cool and of course the catalyst game labs sponsorship giveaway for week seven is the hex pack mountain and canyon that will be up on our giveaway on the forum so make sure to head over there and enter that and of course congratulations to coffee nail from the ghost bears for winning the tro 3039 he actually uses this ts3 which was i poked him and i was like you lucky bastard and uh, i haven't heard back from him so anyways 
He's dead. He's he's dead, and Darren now has a TRO 3039. Funny how that works, huh? Yeah. Sweet. And of course, Facebook, we're up to 3,866 likes. Holy crap, we're about to hit 4,000 likes. Like, I don't understand. That's insane. Um, so make sure to give us a like if you haven't done so. It's a great way for us to give you feedback and, and vice versa. And obviously, I post stuff up on there and our website. And I see a lot of the names here um, sometimes show up, but sometimes you're using the real names. So like, it's sometimes confusing because I'm like, hold on, that's Blue Santa on TS, but he goes by Zach. No. Anyways, uh, it's really cool just sort of seeing faces and stuff as well. Um, yeah. So make sure to do that. Um, YouTube, by the way, if you haven't checked out the showdown, make sure to do so. It's the latest video we have on our YouTube channel. Uh, this is actually a special uh, Darren and uh, uh, had done and released it yesterday. And uh, hey, obviously, I know you guys like this kind of stuff. And me and Darren are going to be working on doing more of this type of um, verging on machinima. Not yes. quite there yet. Yes. Virgining. So virginging. Virginia, Vir Virgin, yeah. It's Virginia. That's not Virginia. Virginia. It's Beard Bonics, brought to you by Darren. Virginia. Virginia. You All guys right. can't talk right. You should get some elocution lessons. And then we have uh, Twitch uh, TV. Obviously, we have the NGNG TV. Of course, we have the newest uh, Twitcher on there is uh, Ed Meister. We actually have another. Uh, new guy coming aboard as well. You guys know him as Amalus um, Blake, and he'll be joining us. Hopefully, I can set him up soon. Uh, that needs to be done. And then uh, we'll have another person to help fill in the time gaps and time zone issues. But head over there. There is, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say this I don't know of date, and this is something MP is working on. We are going to be doing a uh, fundraiser, uh, a don't, you know, basically um, for autism, and that's actually in the not too distant future. And Impaler, it's going to be like a 48-hour... Beginning of next month. 72-hour or something like that, uh, marathon for donations, for and all proceeds go towards the uh, autism. And all of this information will be presented to you guys. Um, so you guys can be able to make donations and stuff. Please, and, you know, like, whatever you feel... We'll be filling in as well. We'll be there helping Impaler get through it. All Basically, well, all the Twitch TV members are going to be there to support and help. Look, at the end of the day... 72 hours no matter how you feel about me or NGNG or, you know, support these causes, you know, just be a good person. And we definitely, uh, you know, appreciate that. And if you don't, we'll just, we'll fight you with our brand. And still taking notes. Yep. And I just want to say thank you to everyone, our community, our staff members, and just everyone in this channel. Thank you again for coming out and being a part of this. And uh, yeah, just make sure to head over to our um, forums. Give us our feedback. Let us know how you guys like the articles. There was a quick draw article. It gives you a lot of uh, background information. And uh, a lot of our journalists, you know, spend a lot of time, uh, you know, writing those up. Make sure to interact. Let them know what you guys think and stuff like that. And uh, for all of you writers out there, again, um, if you're interested, hey, get in contact with us. And I'm sure Dave and some of the other journalists would love to, you know, have you board. And um, so, yeah, I just want to say thank you again to everyone out there. And if you have any suggestions, um, one thing that's on our uh, to-do list and we're waiting on our web guy to get back is the RSS feed. Uh, we understand it's totally fucked right now. Uh, as soon as we can, uh, we will unfuck it. I, I think that's the correct term because it is pretty messed up. So That, that doesn't work. My parents tried. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, Darren should know all about these. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. But yeah, uh, thank you again, guys. And uh, I just want to say uh, you guys are awesome. Especially you, Darren, and that beard. No, you, Phil. No, you, George. No, you, Brandon. The, no, 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 you, Brandon. <laughs> Greg. Oh yeah, Greg here. No, you. Oh, yeah, Greg, Greg. here. Hey, by the way, Greg, how, how's how's Eve been? You've been over there busy or what? Ah, uh, yeah, uh, busier than I would normally think. Um, I. Stop you get, you getting paid for that shit yet? Come back to the actual game. <laughs> I was gonna say, are, are you getting paid for playing Eve yet? I wish. That should be a job. Donate to DecorationsWar.com. Feed me. <laughs> he's, he's getting paid in stress-free happy time. Dude, I'm still time. telling you, I foresee jobs 
And if it's not, someone's already probably doing it in other games, but being a paid you know, like FC or commander to create documentation, training, all this, guarantee it could happen. You could do it in need, and it'd all be word of mouth, so no one could ever track it to you. Just saying, you should do it. Too. Anyways, guys, I'd, I'd be up for it. And I'll, be, I'll be honest with you; it'd be fun to do. Well, yeah, and you I could, mean, you could, as pain in the ass it would be to make it a nine-to-five job, I think it'd be worth it. And you could yeah. hide your payments, like using eBay or something. You know, no Bitcoin. All right. <laughs> it'd all be it all be PayPal. You, you don't have it'd to worry about anything. Bitcoin. Yeah, I mean, you just get all these random donations of X amount, and you're on call, and you know, you're leading that fleets all the time. I trust me, I had thought about it a while. Um, Obviously, more than just a bit. Uh, how much I've seen, I used to do, but that's because you're trying to find something to make a living at, Phil. Come on. Well, I'm just saying, like at the time when I was playing, this was a few years ago. I haven't played Eve for like Space. a year and a half, two years, and so financial frontier. I'm just saying, if you're playing for something and you're good at it, and someone values you, like just, just roll with it. But anyways, no one guys, us enough to pay us. No, no one does. No. And there's always people that just have a lot of money and don't have to work and. They're just out there to kill you, but uh, at least on internet spaceships. Anyways, guys, this has been your local No Guts, No Galaxy Mechware podcast. We hope you enjoyed tonight's show. This is Phil. This is Darren. This is Brandon. This is Craig. And this is George. Until next time, Mech Warriors. <laughs>